Good morning. Welcome to the vlog. Let's go to Stratford. This vlog, I'll warn you now, is mostly going to be me saying repeatedly, isn't it gorgeous? Because as you can see, the weather for this part of the trip was truly superb. I left Offenham Lock and steered round the 90 degree left hand corner, heading almost immediately to Harvington Lock. This is also known as the Robert Aikman Lock, he being the man who led the national campaign to save the canals and inland waterways from going into disuse and disrepair in the 1950s. He is a canal legend. My guidebook says the lock was rebuilt by volunteers, including men from Gloucester Jail and the Royal Engineers from Belfast. Harvington itself dates back at least 1300 years, having been mentioned in Anglo-Saxon charters. past the weir, which, if the river were higher, would cause quite the current to tug at the boat. And onwards into the countryside, which I'm just going to let run for a couple of seconds. This is the edge of a fairly massive park home holiday spot at Abbot Salford. I'm pretty sure that's St Matthew's Church at Salford Priors. And as you go round the corner, the River Arrow trickles in from the left. It's very hard to spot and the guidebook warns that the Avon does get shallow around here because of silt being carried down the smaller river and then dumped. That must be the arrow, I think. It's also quite shallow on the approach here to Marlcliffe Lock, and there's a distinct push from the water coming in on the left. You can see those ripples that give you a clue. There was a boat coming down here, so I had a short wait and a chance to inspect the side of my boat, which was covered in hundreds of tiny, tiny white flies of some sort. I said this vlog was going to be me exclaiming how lovely it all was and look, isn't that just lovely? I could happily have sat here and gone into a zen-like meditation for weeks but with only a seven-day river licence, I had to press on. The moorings up ahead indicate I'm approaching the town of Bidford-on-Avon. It has a rather nice bridge, which I'll go through in a minute or two. There's also a fantastic sports field and park area on the right. There's the bridge. It dates from the early 15th century and is Grade 1 listed. That's the highest category you can get. It's also a scheduled monument, that is a nationally important historic site or building. Unfortunately, it was badly damaged by a tractor in 2015, but has since been repaired. These are free moorings with toilets, water and waste facilities. On the other side, that's a pub with customer moorings, but the guidebook says they are a bit shallow. There are several arches, but you must go through the marked one on the right, not the central ones. Slowly does it, but there's no one coming the other way. You can see how shallow it is. What this pair were doing, I really don't know. They sat in front of me for ages, apparently entirely unaware that I was right behind them. There was no acknowledgement, no movement out of the way. I had to go into neutral several times so as not to run them down. 
They only finally moved when this boat came the other way. Thank you. With them out the way, I could carry on to Barton Lock. I'm not that far away from Stratford and today is Saturday, the weather is glorious, tomorrow Sunday obviously and the weather forecast due to be superb again. Now that means Stratford will just be absolutely ram-packed with uh, narrow boats, GRP boats, kayakers, dinghies, sailing craft, probably people jumping in in the weather, dogs jumping in after balls. It will just be a nightmare I think to go through Stratford tomorrow so I'm actually trying not to get there so I've done a little jaunt today I will do another very little jaunt tomorrow and then on Monday I will actually finish up the journey and go to Stratford and, and through or just to the basin at Stratford something like that but I don't want to do Stratford on a sunny Sunday afternoon it will just be too busy I think just before I packed up for the day this boat came to the lock and lo and behold the crew were viewers of the vlog so they stopped to say hello and gave me a boat tour and very nice it was to meet them too. Morning. Morning. Breaker breaker looks like we got ourselves a swan voy. Though the birds did get out of the way fairly quickly. I'm going to let another few clips run for a bit here so you can see again how utterly lovely it was. Soon after leaving Barton Lock you go past a promontory and then a tiny island. The navigable route is to the left, round the other side are private moorings. There are times along here when the river gets narrower, twistier and a bit more jungle-like. I felt like Humphrey Bogart on the African Queen, but no sign of Catherine Hepburn unfortunately. Here you can just see where an old lock channel used to emerge. Beyond that you come to the modern lock at Bidford Grange. I knew another boat was catching up with me so I'd waited for them to join me in the lock and then let them go first since they had crew and could set the next lock easier than I could. For me, a chance to dawdle behind and take in the scenery. Not a bad little spot for a house, and up high so no flood risk. I'm keeping a polite distance from that other boat. They're pausing up ahead at the lock so there must be someone coming down or on the lock landing. Either way I gently crept up behind to see what the score was. Turns out a wide beam was going into the lock so we both had to wait. Luckily there was plenty of space for us both to pull in. And before you know it, it was our turn. The guidebook warns that Welford Lock is quite turbulent, though I found all of them to be so far. Lucky to have that other boat beside me to minimise any movement. Those are the houses on the edge of Welford, around which the river now skirts in a large N shape before turning east. That solar array is so big it's clearly visible on Google Maps 
and possibly from the moon too. And for at least the third or fourth time this vlog, isn't this lovely? You can't really see it, but behind all those trees is Welford Marina and those boats moored outside are just the tip of the iceberg. There's the entrance, a serene little spot. That made me laugh. Binton Bridge follows and going upstream as I was, you must take the right channel but left hand arch, watching out as always for anyone coming the other way. There's very clear visibility though. Fancy a riverside house? If Knight Frank is selling it, you know it ain't going to be cheap. And more palatial mansions follow. I'm going to run a third little montage section here because it was all just, you guessed it, so darned lovely. If you've seen my previous videos, you know how I like filming bovines at the water's edge, so here are some more. I particularly enjoyed the expression on those faces. Another lock, this time at Luddington, and another short pause while someone ahead came down. I couldn't see enough space on the lock landing, so I hung here. I'd been hoping to moor on the other side and at first glance it looked like there was loads of space but looks are deceiving it seems. Well the plan to moor there has gone horribly awry. There was only one visitor mooring spot and it already had a boat on it that looked quite comfortable. I could have asked to breast up but if I can find an empty one I would rather so I'm going to have to press on about another two or three miles to I think it's Weir Brake Lock. Oh, what terrific hardship it was to carry on, let me tell you, on this sunny, blue-skied, glassy water day. I just needed a gin and tonic and all would be perfect. I'm pretty sure that's the first sign of Stratford-upon-Avon. Hopefully there would be mooring on the other side of the approaching Weir brake lock. I did need that G&T, you know. Hooray and hurrah! Those blue markers mean I was OK to stop here and my solar panels would be getting a full blast too. Time to chill out. Good morning. My destination, Stratford-upon-Avon, Shakespeare's birthplace, is less than one mile and one lock ahead of me. 
and at that point I will turn left off the River Avon and onto the Stratford-upon-Avon Canal. There is a canal basin at the foot of the canal, which I hope to moor in so I can go into town, get some more supplies, do some laundry, all that kind of stuff. However, there is potentially a problem. I've been reading up about the turn off the river into the basin, and you go through a lock, of course, and normally every single lock you come across has a lock landing, a small area where a boat can pull up in front of the lock with bollards to tie to while you go and set the lock. However, apparently, the lock into the basin has no such lock landing. If I had crew, this wouldn't be a problem. I could just touch the side of the uh, river, throw the crew off, they can go and set the lock and then I go in. But being single-handed, this is much more of a problem. I need somewhere to tie the boat up while I go and set the lock. So, if there really isn't a lock landing, apparently there's a single bollard in an awkward place. If it proves to be too troublesome, I will either have to just hang around outside the lock in the middle of the river waiting for someone to come out and I can go in after them, wait for another boat to turn up that wants to go in that has crew and go in with them, or conceivably moor up on completely the other side of the river, shut the boat up, because it will be a bit of a walk, up the, up the river, over the river bridge, down to the lock, set the lock, back over the bridge, back to the boat, set it up again and go across, hoping that in the meantime somebody hasn't shut the lock gates. All sounds like a bit of an annoyance, but we'll just have to see what happens when I get there. It's just spitting distance to the town, not that you'd know it from the view. Nice to see another narrowboat on the move. And always nice to see mini swans with their parent. I was now approaching the last purely river lock I do on this trip, after which we glide serenely into the middle of Stratford. Here it is, apparently the most difficult lock to build on the river because of its depth and the unstable ground, which explains all the metalwork. That does make it difficult to pass the ropes around when you're taking them up with you. Out of the lock and the Holy Trinity Church, which houses Shakespeare's tomb, is on the left. This is the approach into Stratford, a beautiful and huge recreation ground on the right, and thankfully the river wasn't busy at all. On the left, one of the most famous theatres in the whole country, the home of the Royal Shakespeare Company, the RSC. The bridge marks the end of the navigable reach for me, and the turning into the basin is just before it on the left. Fortune was with me not only in the weather, but also two boats coming out of the lock, so if I got my skates on, I could slip in before anyone shut the gates. Around the rowers, through the swans, and a fist pump of happiness as the lock was open and waiting for me. That could not have worked out any better. into the basin, and I just had to do a swift bit of reversing into one of the many visitor moorings. Hang on. Yeah, that worked out all right, if I say so myself. And there I am, the green boat, directly ahead. Let's have a quick look round. Here's the basin seen from the other end, with the river lock in the distance. This is run by the waterways authorities as a tourist information boat. The brown wide beam is a restaurant boat that does trips down the river while guests enjoy a meal. If a snack is more your thing, there's an ice cream boat over there and another nearer one in case 100 yards is too far to walk. Or you can get a sandwich here. 
I thought you might like a view looking back down the river from the pedestrian bridge that goes over the lock. So this is where I've just come up from and I brought the boat under here and into that lock as you just saw. So many birds, so very well fed. And there's another park on this side of the river too. This is Bancroft Gardens. Very nice, buzzing with tourists. I rather like this sign, giving distances and times by canal. Who's that then? Go on, guess. Yes, it's Will Shakespeare. And that's Lady Macbeth. The local birds have no respect for talent or history. Join me in the next vlog where I try to exit the basin under this very low bridge. Cheerio.